Hello everybody, back again, and how are you today? It's been a while since my last video review, but huzzah, here we are. This is my review for Snake Dance. There we go, no glare. Um, I hadn't watched the Kinder Stories, at least I don't, I don't recall watching them until I got them on DVD. And there's this mythos about my favorite absolutely fantastic stories and they have a pinnacle of a JT era and when I watched Kinder for the first time I thought it was boring as hell it was overrated and it's just it's a snooze fill so I didn't have high hopes for snake dance and then I watched it ha ha holy hell this story is amazing it's just it's fantastic it is it is my favorite story of the davidson era it's just it's superb this is this is what the davidson era should have been like all along in regards to the fact that the tardis crew arrived somewhere and have to put a stop to somewhere basically like the hartnell era and the trouton era and that but I love this one because it's like it shows the doctor from the viewpoint of uh, for Manusans who are celebrating their 500th anniversary of defe defeating the Mara. And I love how the fact that the festival has become a bit like Christmas in regards or Easter. You know, where it's, the message of it is lost and it's all just become about flogging cheap tat. And the Doctor appears. Okay, imagine if you will, you're celebrating Christmas, and a madman comes out of nowhere and says that Jesus is returning. He's bringing death and destruction, and one of his uh, one of his person's best mates is infected with the mind of Jesus, and he's just going to kill everybody. You would think he this guy was was a madman, basically. But he's like, well, you know. And yeah, that's how the doctor's treated by the Manusans. And it's realistic, it is. And I love that. I love that the doctor isn't taken seriously in this one. And Davison is on top form. He's brilliant. He's got this energy back that he had in his first few stories. And hold on, I'm, I think I'm gonna sneeze. Am I? No, I don't think so. I've got to uh, tickle it. Anyway. But yeah, um, Davison is fantastic. you got um, Janet Fielding, who puts in her best performance here as Tegan. She is fantastic in this one. Playing Tegan, who is scared of Mars going to take over. Tegan is a six-year-old girl in her mind, and then Tegan, who is well and truly taken over by the Mara. And she's brilliant in this one. She is very creepy as the villain, and she doesn't ham it up at all. You've got the dream sequence again at the start, which is just brilliant. You've got Nissa, who is fair. She's wearing this 1980s garb, and... She doesn't actually do a lot in this story, which is a bit of a shame. But everybody else is fantastic. Liz Sladen's husband is in this one, playing the role of basically a, a funfair host, basically. And I forgot the names. Oh man, I hate it when I forget the names because these characters are fantastic. You've got Martin Clunes in one of his very first TV roles. You've got Oh man, I forgot the bloody names. But anyway, the guest cast is fantastic. And yeah, I, I, I cannot praise this story enough. It's my favourite story of Davidson era. It's the best story of season 20. And obviously, with this story introducing the Marvel, carried on the theme of having a villain from a Doctor's past. Was it wise to bring back a monster from the previous season? Yes and no. I think if you're going to bring back villains from 
other Doctor's eras, and you do need to bring back a villain from a Davidson era. Now, obviously, you've only done one full season. You can't really use the Sidemen all that much. The Master's already earmarked to come back. And so, yeah, for Mara. And, yeah, brilliant in this story. Absolutely brilliant. 10 out of 10, as I say. It's my favourite story. The ending is superb. You've got Tegan, who is just, she's breaking down. She is inconsolable. She is sobbing. She, she's broken, basically. And Doctor just puts his arm around her and holds her close. Because in it, this is an era when JNT demanded the Doctor doesn't touch anyone. Of companions don't touch anyone because it might lead to them having a sexual relationship. Don't quite sure how that worked. Mm, probably. The fact that he puts his arm around her and holds her close as she just breaks down is fantastic. I love this story so much. The sets are great, the score is great, even the Mara is vastly improved on uh, this one. Compared to what we've got in Kinder. And yeah, 10 out of 10. If you haven't seen this story, watch it. You don't even have to have watched Kinder, to be honest, because it's sort of explained in that one how Tegan got infected by Hamara in Kinder. So yeah, Snake Dance, 10 out of 10. Best story of the Davidson era, best story of season 20. And yeah, my next review will be for Mordrin Undead, another favourite of mine. And yeah, I'll see you all soon. Bye.